This morning, there's growing controversy over gaffes by some of President Obama's picks for a handful of ambassador posts. Margaret Brennan looks at the debate over political supporters and donors being given those jobs as a reward. She's at the State Department. Margaret, good morning. Good morning to you, Anthony, and to Gail. Well, there are 23 political nominees for these ambassadorial positions, and four of them are under scrutiny. All of these individuals are highly successful in their own right, but there are questions being thrown at the White House about whether they're actually prepared to represent the U.S. From the beginning, there were questions about the new ambassadors to Argentina, Iceland, and Norway. Business consultant Noah Mamet. Have you been to Argentina? Senator, I haven't had the opportunity yet to be there. Attorney Rob Barber. Mr. Barber, I take it you've been to Iceland? Sir, I've not, I've not had the privilege yet. Past travel is not a job requirement, but winning Senate approval is. Republican Senator John McCain appeared frustrated that hotel owner George Sunis, nominated to serve in Norway, was confused about which political parties make up its government. Government has denounced them. The, co the coalition government, they're part of the coalition of the government. Well, I would say, you know what, I, 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 doubt I, I stand, correct, I stand they, corrected. We have a, a... During her hearing, the nominee to become U.S. Ambassador to Hungary, Colleen Bell, stumbled through an explanation of U.S. interests there. Bell's a soap opera producer whose show, The Bold and the Beautiful, airs on CBS. But she is also a top fundraiser who brought in more than $500,000 in donations for the Obama campaign. So did the nominees to Argentina, Norway, and Iceland. Last week, White House spokesman Jay Carney defended President Obama's choices. Being a donor to the president's campaign uh, does not uh, guarantee you a job in the administration, but it does not prevent you from getting one. The reality is that all presidents give plum assignments as political rewards. During his two terms in office, 37 percent of President Obama's ambassadorial appointees have been political supporters, not professional diplomats. That's higher than President Clinton and more than either of the Bush administrations. But it's slightly less than Presidents Ronald Reagan and Jimmy Carter. Former Ambassador Stuart Holliday was a political appointee under President George W. Bush. I really think that political appointees can be wonderful representatives of the president. These people are people of achievement. but Yes, they should have been prepared and uh, be ready uh, because they're going to have to be ready when they go to post. The State Department says these ambassadors should be judged by their performance in office. But before they get there, they need to be confirmed by the Senate and no vote has been scheduled just yet. We do know in the coming days, the union that represents the Foreign Service is about to issue new job requirement guidelines. They want more foreign policy experienced officers to get these jobs. All right, Margaret Brennan, thank you.